Hi guys, it's Izzy, or as you know me, Tarot Cards and Tea, and today I want to talk to you about Japarit's Tarot. And since I have the guidebook in my hand right now, I figured I would talk about this first. So the guidebook is really nice in the fact that it's very thorough. It gives you both a description of the card and then a divinatory meaning or possible meanings. And then it's also really nice because on the flip side of each depiction, description rather, it gives you a depiction of the card. So that helps to reinforce the image that you are working with. As you'll see, the cards are very vibrant. They're very saturated um, and they're very exciting, frankly. Um, there are some different interpretations than what I'm used to mainly because there is a variation of the suits. So usually you will have the swords, wands, cups, and pentacles. But with Japarit's Tarot, we have the winds, fire, tides, and gardens. So instead of using the traditional suits, Japarit's Tarot uh, translates it into the elements that they correspond to. So that's nice because it's a little different uh, interpretation that I'm used to. I, for one, don't usually tie in the elemental into my interpretation. So that's nice in the fact that I will be flexing some intuitive muscles that I maybe don't flex enough. Um, but that being said, it is going to take some getting used to of this mental switch of, you know, instead of swords, it's winds. Instead of cups, it's tides. Um, so I'm very intrigued as to how that's going to play out when I actually read with them. Another minor change you'll notice is instead of in the court cards, instead of page and knight, we have jester and stranger, respectively. And that was just artistic choice. In the major arcana, too, there are some variations. Instead of going from the empress to the emperor, we have the empress and then we have war is very interesting. In the guidebook, uh, they mentioned that they wanted to show a slightly different interpretation of that rigid patriarchal energy and how that can play out. Uh, so I thought that was very interesting. Also, instead of the lovers, we have love, very minor change. Um, and then instead of the hanged man, we have the drowned, which has a slightly different connotation where the hanged man sort of depicts, um, you know, two step forward, one step back, sort of in limbo here and there. Uh, the drowned sort of speaks as a self-sacrifice and a willing uh, giving up of something, some part of yourself that, that means so much to you. Uh, so it's, it's a slightly different interpretation there. Now onto the deck as a whole. Um, this deck, the cards, are very large, I must say. I don't know the exact dimensions, but I have very, very large hands, and I have difficulty maneuvering this deck. So if you have tiny hands, uh, you may either, either want to A, not purchase this deck, or B, uh, do a deck modification and trim the edges. Another thing to note is that the cards are rather slippery. So if you're an overhand shuffler, like I tend to be, you'll find that the cards fall a little faster than you expect them to, which may result in some sloppy shuffling or some jumpers, um, but I expect that that will just take some getting used to, um, like all new decks do. I will say the cards are very malleable. I don't want to say flimsy because that implies uh, some lack of uh, quality but they're malleable. So if you're a casino shuffler, you definitely have that option. They bend rather easily. Um, overall, I would give this deck probably a nine out of 10. Uh, the point being docked number one, just because the cards are so darn big. Like if I have freakishly large man hands and I can barely shuffle these, I don't wanna think about you people who have normal sized hands. Uh, but overall, the depictions are beautiful. Uh, very vibrant, very um, different, so definitely going to take some getting used to, and I'm excited on to see how that's going to play out. Um, yeah, and then I, I'm very intrigued to see how this uh, these elements work versus the uh, the traditional suits. So yeah, over overall, I'd give it a nine out of ten. Again, this was Izzy or Tarot Cards and Tea and my review of Japarit's Tarot. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you have a good day.